Like all movies, Mason, comic book movies have a history of actors either walking away or being fired and then replaced with a different actor. I thought you were going to say, like all movies, superhero movies have a history of actors. <laughs> they certainly do, Mason. Mm-hmm. I'd like to talk about this because of the new Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie, who technically, I know he isn't replacing Jared Leto, but at the same time, I feel like if everybody was on board with that version, then, you know, we'd be getting that Joker movie. Well, I guess this also, this video comes off the back of the rumours of Henry Cavill walking away from uh, Superman or being fired mm-hmm. and Ben Affleck He's going to Craig David it. He's going to Craig David it. He's Why gonna... do I keep making that reference? Nobody knows what I'm talking about. People know that you're referring to him having a wonderful singing career. That's what you're mm-hmm. referring That's what I, to, yeah, correct? Exactly. Mm-hmm, correct? So we thought we'd go through some actors from various comic book movies that were either Craig David or were mm-hmm. fired from their particular roles. Mm-hmm. I think a good one to be start with would be good C, good C, would be DC Mason. <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Now, I'm not talking about also movies that actors were hired and then the movie was never made. So like Justice League Mortal. I'm mm-hmm. talking about you take an actor and then you replace it with a completely different actor. Mm-hmm. Billy D. Williams was supposed to be Two-Face in the Tim Burton Batman films. Yes. Which are technically in the same continuity as the Schumacher movies, but he was replaced by one Thomas Lee Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Do we know why that is? I think they just wanted to get away from the Burton ones in uh-huh. some ways, but also not in other ways. <laughs> I guess would be I the guess that's probably true. Bet. Because obviously Billy D. Williams is in the first Batman as mm. Harvey Dent, mm. which was a bit of a twist because he's African American and tr- Harvey Dent traditionally isn't mm-hmm. and we we're like oh what's this going to what's this is he going to be two faces very exciting never was was the plan though apparently yeah okay right is Tommy Lee Jones one of those guys that he took the role because his kids insisted yeah, his on kid, it yeah uh-huh. we've got a video on it how uh, Jim Carrey hated him no sorry he hated Jim Carrey and that was <laughs> right. the whole behind the scenes thing uh-huh. I won't get into it. But basically, also, those movies have a history of replacing a bunch of people in them. Annette Benning was going to be Catwoman right? Yeah. Catwoman happened. Uh-huh. Uh, she was pregnant, though, and mm-hmm. so they didn't do it. Yep. Uh, didn't want to throw her off that roof. No. <laughs> Michael Keaton was replaced by Val Kilmer, who was replaced by George Clooney. Also, I think that was the era where people didn't care as much. I think it's a bigger Agreed, deal yeah. now. Because then it, it wasn't a... It was a... It wasn't a, like the Marvel movies where... Maybe that character's going to be in ten movies. You know, mm. it it wasn't a it wasn't a Batman's going to encounter Superman over here. Like it's there was no they were all all these all these superhero movies at the time were kind of self contained. Yeah. So it didn't really matter who the hero was as long as they but they had an actor. Exactly. They just needed to have an actor. Yeah. Theory yeah. confirmed. That's it. Well, people don't even like now when you swap out an actor who's normally is swapped out, like a James Bond or a Doctor Who or whatever. That's true. So, yeah. So you know. Mm -hmm. different times why did they replace Val Kilmer Uh, because apparently him and Joel Schumacher didn't work very well see eye to eye right did maybe Val Kilmer think he was signing on to a more serious movie I have no idea I think maybe that was the case Let's assume it was. Let's assume it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you want a more modern example, 10 years ago, The Dark Knight, uh, Rachel Dawes was yeah. replaced. She was Katie Holmes. Yes. And then she was a different lady. Maggie Gyllenhaal. There we go. Rachel! Rachel! <laughs> Where are the drugs, Rachel? <laughs> I think uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal was better in the role. Ooh. What was she? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's another sort of DC one. Uh huh. Do you know James Purifoy? P U R E F O Y. Why did Katie Holmes drop out? I can't remember why. This was around the time she was with Tom Cruise. Maybe so that was it. Maybe it was some Scientology magic that oh, yeah. interfered. Uh-huh. I, I honestly don't know. A curse. Yeah, it was a curse, correct. Okay, right. Uh-huh. Do you know James Purifoy? Sort of. He was going to be. If I can take a guess at where you're going. Sure. Was he, was he going to be V from V for Vendetta? It was V for Vendetta. That's yeah. correct. Uh-huh. Uh, they actually shot several weeks of footage with him in the role before uh-huh. he was replaced by Hugo Weaving and then the entire thing was dubbed by uh-huh. Hugo Weaving. Did they not like the smug expression he was putting on his face the whole time? <laughs> this really derisive look as if I'm too good for this. <sighs> There's sensors inside the mask that that record your your facial expressions. Oh, Did you know that? Enthusiasm start up. Yeah, and you're like, I'm too good for this. So, they, so he was out. I thought Hugo even was really good in that movie. I agree. Is it because he was not happy with the fact that you could never see the character's face? Yeah. At so no point you would ever see his face, and he's like, no, 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 no. Got a quote no, no, here. No, no. There yeah. are two varying stories on regarding uh, Pure Foy's exit. Oh, controversial. Have no idea how to say this. Uh, from the picture, with one. It's suggest- pure foy. Is it? Like you know how sometimes you have some some blended foy. Yeah. And you're like, I wish I had pure foy. One hundred percent foy. A foy. Yeah. Okay. Fair. I get really high. I'd be I'd be really high on this foy if it was pure foy. <laughs> That's how you pronounce it. With one suggesting that the actor became frustrated with having to act under a mask the entire time. Mm. There you go. The only way that I feel that movie would have benefited from him is that he's a lesser known actor. So you don't really know who's under the mask. With yes, you go right. weaving, the big point of the comic is you don't know. 
who V is. Right. Guy, girl, age, anything. Exactly, but right. in the movie, you're like, well, it's just Hugo That's Weaving. That's Hugo Weaving's <laughs> voice, so that probably looks like Hugo Weaving. Yeah. He probably looks like Elrond from Lord of the Rings. That's right. Long hair at all. Mm. Uh, we can we can dip into the Marvel Universe, though, okay. if you want, Mason. These are more early on casting changes. I feel now if an actor walks away, Craig David style... They'll write out the character. They'll write out the character, yeah. Uh-huh. Like they did for, say, Jane Foster. Yeah, right. Until uh-huh. uh-huh. she probably comes back at some point. Yeah. But uh, Ed Norton was famously replaced as Bruce Banner, mm-hmm. which I don't really think matters too much because nobody really remembers. Well, no, a lot of people don't even... Cause, because, the, you know, prior to the Marvel Universe proper, there was Ang Lee's Hulk mm-hmm. with Eric Banner. Yep. And then that is not really considered canon. The Incredible Hulk is part of the MCU Yes, with Norton, but a lot of people still don't even remember that it is, even though it came out after Iron Man. And it has Tony Stark in it. Yeah, Tony Stark is literally in it, And yeah. General Ross also turns up later, but yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't really care about uh-huh. it. Now, do we know... I believe Edward Norton can be considered a little bit prickly to work with. Is that something to do with it? I think it? recently he said something about he just wanted the movie to be better than what it was. Because he did some script rewrites, I think. Yeah. Or at least, or at the very least, he was like, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he also, I know there's a big deal with American History X and the director behind that. He, apparently, he made a lot of changes. So, okay, maybe he thought, you know, going into that, you know, he had some ideas which which okay. didn't come to fruition. Uh, I think he would have been actually, if they had stuck around, I think he would have been good. Yeah, but I also like Ruffalo. Yeah. He's, I think he also said that he enjoy, at one point, maybe a couple of years ago, he said that he enjoyed working on it, mm. but he wanted more diversity in his career. Okay, and I think maybe he was like, well, if I become one of the Marvel guys. I'm the Hulk for 10 years kind yeah. of thing. So maybe that's why. Maybe that is why, mm-hmm. yeah. I've got Terrence Stamp here, but it's not him. <laughs> it's not Terrence Howard, not probably. Terrence Howard. Unless Terrence Stamp... Terrence Stamp was Zod for a while. He was Zod. Our movie. I think he was Zod all the way to the end. Yeah. He was the senator, what's his Until name? Until he fell Phantom off. Menace. What did he? What happened to him? Did he fall? Superman broke every bone in his hand and threw him into a bottomless pit. He threw him into a bottomless pit. That's and what I, I thought. I know that in the TV version or whatever, Zod's still alive, but in... Pretty much every other cut of that movie, Superman murders a man. Oh, because he does he just go to jail at the end? Look, it's not important. It's not important. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Where's the bottomless pit go? It must go to the center of the earth. Uh, maybe he's got like another prison down there. Yeah, he probably knows. does, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Terrence Howard was replaced by Don Cheadle. Mm. Uh, notoriously, well, there's a few things that happened. Apparently, he wanted more money, like equal billing with Robert Downey Jr. Because they were about the, as famous as each other at the at time. At the time, right, yeah. Uh, and there was also words from some of the higher-ups at uh, Marvel. I think it was in particular Ike Perlmutter that said... Nobody's going to notice if we just swap out this guy. Oh, wow. brutal. Yeah. Which I mean, we did notice. We just we didn't care. Noticed, yeah. That's the difference. I like Don Cheadle. I, actually, I was kind of, I think Terrence Howard would absolutely have worked if he stuck around. But hey, that's movie making. I think isn't he should it? have changed that mustache, though. Yeah, you're probably yeah. right. I think if they were going to change anything, if there was, if there, if the negotiations broke down on whether or not he should have gotten rid of the mustache, mm-hmm. I feel Terrence, if you're listening, you're not. You should have shaved the mustache. Agreed. Mm hmm. Uh, too twiddly. Too twiddly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fandral also from uh, the Thor movies. He was initially Stuart Townsend, who was also initially Aragon, okay. who was also Lestat in the <laughs> sequel to Interview of the Vampire, Vampire. Yes, good. Queen of the Damned. Mm-hmm. But he was then replaced at the very last minute with some guy, I can't remember, who was then replaced with the guy who's now Shazam. Zachary Levi. Correct. Wow, there you go. So there you bloody go. Mm-hmm. But nobody noticed any of that. <laughs> now, which... Was he one of the Warriors 3? Yes. Which one? Uh, the Robin Hoodie one. <laughs> the the, Der- the Errol Flynn Daring Do one. Okay, That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. The Carrie Elwes. Do you mind if we, though... Dip into the X Men universe, Mason. I don't mind at all. So that's a there's a plethora of casting replacements in that. The guy who played Pyro was replaced because yep. he was kind of a minor role in one. Uh-huh. Uh, Kitty Pride also shows up earlier and then was replaced with Alan yep. Page. Emma oh, Frost Emma was Frost. a lady, a, yep. a random teen, and then became uh, a different <laughs> lady. January Jones. There we go. But it was also then the 60s. Yep. Mm-hmm. Strange days. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Bolivar Trask was the one of the dudes from Predator, the original Predator. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that's true. And then became uh, Peter Dinklage. Yep. I was trying to think the dink. Yeah, right. But I did in the end. Yeah, you got to think the dink. Yeah, yeah. But some more, I guess more of the f- the more well-known ones was Channing Tatum was going to be Gambit at one point and now he might still be Gambit again. <laughs> or maybe not because who yep. knows what's happening. And Doug Ray Scott was going to be Wolverine until he wasn't. But then was that a was that a scheduling conflict with Mission Impossible 2? Correct, too? it was, yeah. Huh, so I guess imagine. So, with that though, technically not replaced either of those. Yeah, but, right. Uh, 
because they didn't film anything and then and then they were they were shunted away, Mason. They were shunted right out. I thought we could end really strong though. Do you want to end on an absolute high? Yeah. Ar- a real perler. Okay. Armin Voslu replaced Liam Neeson in the sequel to Darkman, Die Darkman Die. I know that. <laughs> I'm well aware. Sam Raimi's now com- Arnold comic Bosluf, book movie. famously The Mummy. Yes. Uh, and I've seen him in something else recently. He's also Zartan in the G.I. Joe movies. Great. Mm-hmm. The He's Master also- of Disguise. Yes. The Master of Acting. Very and much Disguise, because so. of Darkman. And also Darkman. Darkman's Dark Dark yes. also a Master of Disguise. Do you think they hire him for his, for his disguise abilities? They definitely hired him for his disguise abilities in the movie Die, Darkman. Darkman, Die, Dark. yeah. yeah. I think that's Darkman 3. Oh, is it? Well, he was also in that one. No, wait. Darkman 2 is Die, Darkman, Die. <laughs> Darkman 3 is The Return of Durant. You know <laughs> Durant? It's called Darkman. Yeah. Is it called Darkman, The Return of Durant? It's called just... Darkman 3, The okay. Return of Durant. Because that's cause You that... remember Durant? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Which one was he? He was the bad guy in the first one. I love Darkman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do, kind of. <laughs> Me too. I kind of do love Darkman. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Hey, has anyone else got any examples of actors that were replaced? I guess you could count like the Spider-Man movies, but they're a different mm-hmm. series. Yep. You know, but I'm sure if there's specifically. Other... One of your favourite superheroes has been replaced by Arnold Vosloo. Mm. Let us know. Let us know. Mm-hmm. Give us a blood diamond fact. He's in that. Yeah. That's fine. If you've ever been consumed by like a like a wall of sand produced from the, mark, the, from the mouth of Arnold Vosloo, let us know. <laughs> Hit us up. Leave it in a comment. <laughs> Smash that like button. Okay, we have a show. It's called The Weekly Planet. It's out every Monday where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We just did one and there'll be another one. There <laughs> nice. every week. You can't stop us. That's right. You probably could find a way to stop us. Please don't try. We also have videos here every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Hit that big old um, Arnold Vosloo subscribe button or whatever. <laughs> Are you going to build some sort of custom Arnold Vosloo subscribe button? I'm not going to edit this one. Matt's going to do it. <laughs> and he's going to do a great job. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> but thanks for watching this video. Grab, Have a good time. Grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. This was the worst one we've ever done. Disagree. Disagree. <laughs>